All right, we're, this is the 12th Sunday after Pentecost, and it's proper 15A. Um, and um, and let's, let's start with the gospel reading first from Matthew chapter 15. Um, we're just reading through um, Matthew's gospel, um, and we're picking up the stories that we didn't read earlier in the church year. Um, and uh, so we're in chapter 15. Um, the beginning of chapter 15, um, uh, Jesus is challenging um, the man-made rules and laws that were established. Um, and one of them he goes after, uh, well, they, they ask him, how come your disciples don't wash their hands before they eat? And it's not hygiene that they're asking. It was this ceremonial you know, hoo, 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 look at me, I'm washing my hands. And Jesus says, nowhere is that found in the Old Testament. Nowhere does it say you have to wash your hands, this ceremonial washing, um, to do that. And then Jesus goes on to say, because they're so concerned about being clean, and Jesus says, it's not what goes into a person that makes them clean or unclean, it's what comes out. And he says, it's, um, you know, when unclean things come out, and he makes a whole list, uh, murder, robbery, sexual immorality, whole list, he goes, that's because that all comes from an unclean heart. It's not because you're eating bacon that you do these things. It's because of that. So this is all happening, and his disciples are listening to this, and, and, and you know, not only doing battle with the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the day, but he's helping his disciples to hear, um, you know, what, what truly is important. Now, right after that, uh, we move in verse 21. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district, district of Tyre and Sidon. Um, and just to point that out, that this will be the farthest away in Jesus' adult ministry that he will be from Jerusalem. And Tyre and Sidon are in Gentile land. Yes. Where is there? Is there, there, right after the, there. Um, right after his conversation with the Pharisees. They're still, they're down here. They're, still they're in Galilee, Galilee probably Capernaum, because that's Jesus seems to be his headquarters. And so they're come, some of them are coming up and, and challenging. So Jesus is going to, they're going to go up north to Tyre and Sidon. So that's what's going on. Jesus, this is about a year away from... Uh, crucifixion, resurrection. So Jesus will soon be making his way south. So this is all, this is Gentile. So the disciples are going to be going, why are we going here? This is not, this is not God, God's chosen people. Jesus is going to teach him a lesson. Um, and behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. Now, let's start with a, a Canaanite woman. Now, if you remember, um, when God says to Joshua, and they come out of their, their the exodus, he goes, I want you to go in there, and I want you to destroy everybody, and part of the everybody were the Canaanites, because they worship false gods, they were bad people. Well, they didn't do that, obviously, because we have a Canaanite woman here. Um, and so that's what's going on. Now, the Canaanites um, are descendants of Ham, one of the sons of Noah. And Ham turns out not to be a good guy. Um, and so that's what's going on. But most of the Canaanites either put to death or they're driven out, but they're still, I mean, obviously they're still here. So this is a Canaanite, strike one, woman, strike two. Um, and um, in dealing with that. But she comes to Jesus and she says the right words. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. So she's pleading, help, you know, uh, I, have, I have a problem and, and you can take care of it. Verse 23, but he did not answer her a word. Wait a minute, Jesus. I thought you were kind and compassionate. I mean, were you not moved a couple weeks ago when you saw the crowds as you got out of the boat 
and you were, had compassion on them, you were moved to do something for them, but here you say nothing. So what does she do? Well, came and begged her and saying, send her away for she's crying out after us. So Jesus is saying nothing. I'll go to Jesus' disciples and beg, annoy, persist, whatever the case may be. I have, my daughter's demon possessed. I need, I need help. Um, and the disciples say to him, send her away. Send her away. Get rid of her. Just tell her, nope, we're not going to do that. He answered, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I was only sent to the Jews. That's my job. I was going to come and share the good news of God's salvation. Not really, but he, want, he needed to say that. So that she comes back, and this is an awesome prayer. Verse 25, she knelt before him saying, Lord, help me. Now, last week, when Peter was drowning, what was Peter's words to the Lord? Lord, save me. So we have this very, help me. <clears throat> and then, but then Jesus responds. It's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Now, uh, I want to start with the dog phrase. It's not what, how we think of dogs today. Dogs were seen as unclean animals. For the most part, they were not allowed in people's homes. They would shoo dogs away. That, that was, so Jesus is saying to this Canaanite woman, you're a dog. That was a very derogatory term. You're a dog. He says, and it's not right to give the children's bread to the dogs. Now, what is Jesus talking about there? What is the children's bread? What, Mike? Jewish? Eh, a little bit. The, think of it this way. The children's bread is God's salvation. It's his salvation. It's not right to give God's salvation to the dogs. And yet she doesn't miss a beat. She says, yes, Lord, you are correct. God's salvation is not for the dogs. Not for dogs. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. She gets it. She gets it. Now, and then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. So Jesus goes up here to the Gentile land. Now, let's just say you had your Bibles and you would jump over to Matthew 28. And Jesus' final word to the disciples is, go and make disciples of all nations. So Matthew and Jesus is already preparing the reader the disciples, you and me, as to why Jesus came and what's going to happen at the end of the story. Jesus' plan of salvation included this Canaanite woman and her daughter and whoever else. Because she says, even the crumbs is good enough. So God's plan of salvation primarily for the Jews, and we're going to hear that in the epistle reading, but God says, but it's for all people. Even the crumbs, which is gospel. We get the crumbs, this wonderful plan of salvation. So is he contradicting himself or his plan when he says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel? Um, who are the lost sheep of Israel? Who are the lost sheep of it? Who, who is Israel today? The Jews. All of us. The church. Oh. You gotta, when you read this, you gotta, we know the end of the story. Right. 
And so we're going to read back and say, oh, the, 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 is, is for the house. So the house of Israel now are the faithful. It's the descendants of Abraham. It's those who trust and believe what the Lord has said he will do and what he's done and will continue to do. So um, she goes, yep, that plan of salvation, I get it. But even the crumbs, even we who are dogs, we get it. And we're part of the, we're part of the family. Now, I always picture in my mind in verse 28 that when she says that, Jesus is just looking down. It's all right to give the bread to the children, you know, bread to the children to the dogs. And she says, but even the crumbs from the master's table. I just picture Jesus smiling and saying, she gets it. Great is your faith. Now, then I picture in my mind, here's Peter. And remember, what did Jesus say to Peter? Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And then Jesus saying to this Canaanite woman, great is your faith? Wait a minute. She's not one of us. And yet Jesus says, her faith is great. I'm one of Jesus' disciples, and my faith is like nothing, and I doubt. I just picture that. Isn't that like us too? Because God's, God wants to save who? All people. Even the ones we don't even like or we don't deem as worthy. Of course, in reality, who's worthy to be saved? No one. We're all in the same boat with that. We're all going to be those dogs who just beg for the crumbs. So we, we have this wonderful, you know, as Jesus takes his disciples way up north, out of Jewish land, the Gentile land, and Jesus is kind of telling them, you know, this plan of salvation is not just for the Jews. It's really going to be for everyone. Everyone. Because he wanted, he knew that what the woman was going to say because he was truly God. It was not some coincidence that she happened to be there when Jesus came up. God worked it all out. And that the disciples were standing there going, oh, oh. Because once Pentecost happens in the book of Acts, now they're going to go to the whole world. All right, let's jump over. Any questions on that? Let's jump over to the Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 56. Now, I've said this before. I believe that chapters 56 through 66 of Isaiah is a commentary on Matthew 28, Jesus saying, go make disciples of all nations. I think this is what God, when Jesus said that, he was hoping the disciples say, oh, so that's what 56 to 66 means, that part of Isaiah. And so um, we do this. Now, chapters 54 and 55 are um, what God does for his people, how he will save them, how he saves them, continues to save them. Kind of that going on. There's two whole chapters on that. And then 56 is the response, what do we do? What is our response to that? Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. So those who are saved, we should keep justice, do what is just, and do the right thing. Do righteousness. Do the right thing. So do what God would want us to do. And then we skip a couple verses because uh, verses 2, 3, and 4 have to do with eunuchs. We don't need to worry about that. Verse 6. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, oh, that Canaanite woman, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it, and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in the house of prayer, my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifice will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, declares, 
I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. In other words, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing and teaching, baptizing and teaching here. So you see here that this plan of salvation, this salvation is not just for the Jews, but God wants it for all people. It's not just for us Lutherans, but it's for all people. Questions, comments on that? I, I just want to make one comment, and I know I'm preaching to the choir in here. Um, verse 6, um, though, I mean, it's those who are saved, um, they keep the Sabbath and do not profane it. In other words, as we would put that in the 21st century lingo, those who are believers in the Lord, what are they doing on Sundays? They are gathered together as God's people around word and sacrament. That's what we do. If you're capable of doing that, I understand. But if you can, you should do that. Now, I was just watching a video um, last week. Um, and it was very interesting. This preacher comes up and he says, we have in our culture have made Sunday a second Saturday. Sunday is always the day of the Lord. Sunday was always you gather together as family and you family of God and then family um, and, and receive the gifts that God has given to us. We have made Sunday a second Saturday. Saturday you go do your whatever, play baseball, whatever, golf, whatever. But now we've made Sunday a second Saturday. I said, I'm going to use that. I'm going to say that. I mean, I think we need to hear that because it has gotten worse over the years of my ministry. I thought it was bad when I first got here. Oh, it's much worse. It's much worse. And it's not just it's Lutherans that do the same thing. We all do it. That they have a at 11 o'clock. Exactly. Sunday you know, morning. correct. I mean, you got, you know, you... I mean, when we have our Lutheran tournaments, um, us pastors say, you have to wait, wait until, at least till noon before you start scheduling things. Oh, it'd be so much better if we did it at 10 o'clock. We'll have church before. No, you need to be in with your church family in your church. So that's, that's what's happening. Growing up, our stores were always closed on Sunday. Mm-hmm. At least Hobby Lobby was still on. Yes. And Chick-fil-A. Yeah. The only day I really wanted chicken sandwiches on Sunday. No, no, I shouldn't say that. Um, but yes, that's, uh, oh, we did. I mean, obviously with the pandemic, everything, that we kind of got back to that a little bit. And then now we're just back to when we were before, but um, things like that. So, you know, in, in helping families see that, it's so easy, so easy to get sucked up into that and say, oh, we're going to do the baseball, volleyball, whatever thing. And. Oh, Sunday, that's a day. That's an open day. We can, no, it's not an open day. You shouldn't think of it as an open day. It's a day to the Lord. And then in the afternoon during football season, you fall asleep during the football games. Yes. Whatever they can know, I shouldn't say that. Well, that's what happens in my house. But. I don't know if anybody remembers Mr. Briggs. There was a big store like mm-hmm. Walmart. Yeah. Was the first one here. That's the first store that was open on Sunday. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yep, everybody. So that's what happens. That's the world we live in. I think the only way we can change that is if if God's people say, you know what, we're not going to, this is family time. This is God's time. So, um, and, well, that's part of it. I mean, that's, yes, it's money. But I I do find it amazing that Hobby Lobby and Chick-fil-A, who are closed on Sundays, they do very, very well. They do very, very well. So, um, with that. Um, Our epistle lesson, Romans chapter 11. And we're just reading through Romans, but this time it kind of matches up, sort of, kind of. It's chapter 11, and we're skipping skipping a lot of verses. Um, um, so, um, So, Paul 
if you remember last week, in a couple of weeks, Paul is willing to give up his own salvation uh, for his brother and sister Jewish family. Um, and so, but then Paul is also writing to a Gentile Greek audience as well and, um, and reminding them, you're not, you, you're not as, as good as you think you are either. Uh, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. God has not rejected the Jews. The Jews have rejected God, but God has not rejected them. For I am self an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. God still wants the Jewish people to be saved. God wants all people to be saved. So he's not rejected them. Uh, now I'm speaking to you Gentiles. And as much as I'm an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? So Paul here says, I'm going to convert the Gentiles so that my Jewish brother and sisters get jealous and say, hey, that's for us. That's kind of how Paul, what's Paul, Paul saying here. He says, I'm hoping that happens. They go, well, wait a minute. That's not, that's for us. And Paul's saying, well, it is. Here it is. But you rejected it. Now accept it. Um, verse 20, as regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake. Meaning the gospel is just God's free gift of salvation to all people. You don't have to do anything to be saved. Remember, the Jewish people believe that in order to be saved, you have to keep God's law, his commandments. That goes with, uh, as I mentioned uh, prior to our reading in the gospel, that they're so concerned about your disciples aren't washing their hands. Or one time they're walking on the Sabbath day and the disciples go out and start to eat some of the grain and they're going, you can't do that. And Jesus is going, uh, remember David? He was hungry. And he went to the priest. And the priest gave him the, the holy bread to eat. That, that was only for the priest. I think God's going to be okay with that. God's okay with that. So Jesus is really hitting on their, we're saved by our works. Jesus says, you're not saved by your works. You can't do enough. You're always going to fall short. And so he says, the, the Jewish people... They don't like this gospel. They don't like that we're saved by God's grace, only by God's grace. As regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. God chose them. Remember, God chose Abraham. Of all the people in the world, God says, you, it's through you the whole world will be blessed. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. So when he'll call, he blesses, he won't take it back. Just as you were once at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience. So they too have now been disobedient or that uh, in order that by the mercy shown to you, they also may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience that he may have mercy on all. Four times he uses the word mercy here, Paul. Um, and mercy is... is um, not giving to us what we deserve. Grace is giving to us what we don't deserve. Mercy is not giving to us what we deserve. Um, and so they said, you know, God in his mercy, he decided to save you. What you deserved was uh, eternal damnation, eternal punishment. But in his mercy, he says, nope, because of Christ, I'm not going to do that. And so Paul is making this plea that, oh, the Gentiles got this mercy. The Jews are saying, wait a minute, that's for us and that they would also be part of that, understanding that that mercy is for them as well. And that, um, and, and this salvation only comes from God. It's only through God's mercy, his grace. It's always God's doing um, that, that we have that, so. I get terribly confused I, I would like you to go through and tell me exactly who are they and them and you so I can write it down. And that would make more sense. To okay. Me. Um, what, what verse are you specifically talking about? Well, 
30 and 31? Starting, starting with 28. Um, the they, the Jews, they, the Jews, are enemies of God because they reject the gospel. They, yes. Now, <clears throat> there you go. <clears throat> Excuse me. As election, they, meaning the Jews, are beloved for the sake of their forefathers, meaning <clears throat> Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God chose them, so they were they were chosen. They were elected. And so, and then verse 30, just as you, meaning the, Jew, the, the Gentile people who are reading this, the Greeks, but Gent we'll say Gentiles, were at once disobedient. Just like that Canaanite woman, somewhere along the way, she was disobedient, but the crumbs of salvation she got a hold of, and she, she says, this is great. You have received mercy because of their disobedience. So God says, now that my people have rejected me, we're going to go out and share this with everybody else. So there means Jews. Jews. Okay. And then the 31, they is the Jews again. So they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, Gentiles, or you could say, you believers. I mean, you could. They also um, shown to you, they. Is that the Jews? That's that they also may now, yes, that they may now, that they, they can be in, they can get this gift. And then all is everybody mm -hmm. that he should have been capitalized, the Lord, yeah. may have mercy on all, which is all people. Any questions on any of that? It's a bit confusing sometimes how you, how Paul will write that. I can see why they, they, the Jews were, were brought up with all these rules. Right. And, and so you can see why they, to them yes. it seemed really important. Yes. Right. And then when Jesus comes along and says, you don't have to do any of that. You know what they say? And they go, oh, oh, oh. I, I just picture Jesus saying, breathe. You're, it's okay. This is, this is the way it's supposed to be. And that's really the way it was from the beginning. When God calls Abraham, Abraham didn't, he didn't have any rules or hoops to jump through. He just believed God. And it was credited to him as righteousness. He wasn't righteous because of what he did. He was righteous because he trusted and believed what the Lord said he would do. And that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Can you explain verse 32 a little bit more? For God has consigned all to disobedience. Um, because of sin, we are all born sinful. And left to ourselves, we are all destined for eternal punishment yeah. because of the sin of Adam and Eve. So that's it? That's what that is. So all have been co-signed. All have been... And I... I, I co-sign seems to... It's not the best word there, but God determined, God proclaimed, God... That we're all disobedient... When there is nothing in us that God says, oh, Laura is a better person than Nona. So I'm going to pick, I mean, we're all, I think so. well, whatever. <laughs> there I go sinning. Right there you now. go. <laughs> and the reason why that, and that's the end of the sentence, so that he may have mercy 
on all. I mean, that, that mercy comes from God. We don't earn God's mercy. We can't buy it. We can't, we're, we're all lost eternally, but God in his love sent his son to save us, to make us part of the family, to give us that faith, that salvation. So that no one can ever say, oh, I did my part in order to be saved. And God says, well, you, even if you tried, you couldn't do enough to do your part. So that's what that is. We'll see if by Sunday I come up with a better word than cosigned. I mean, it was like, nope. And if you remember, we were all cosigned to, to being sinful because of who? Adam and Eve. I mean, that's not fair. I didn't do anything wrong. Oh, yeah, my great, 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 all the way back, they did something wrong. So it's on all of us. That's not fair. But then again, God saving each and every one of us is not fair either. If God was fair, we'd be in big trouble. All right, uh, intro it. Psalm 28. This goes with, uh, um, in our Old Testament reading, uh, if you are saved, then this is what we do, kind of stuff. Uh, the Lord is the strength of his people. He's the saving refuge of his anointed. To you, O Lord, I call my rock. Do not be deaf to me. Lest if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Kind of that woman, the Canaanite woman. That she comes to Jesus. Oh, son of David, my daughter's demon possessed. And Jesus says, but she's, she continues on. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy. When I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary, blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield, and in him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exalts, and with my song I give thanks to him. Glory be to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. He's the saving refuge of his anointed. So our salvation comes from God. So if we're going to, you know, talk about our salvation, it all comes from God. We have nothing to do with it. Or as Luther says, the only thing that we contribute to our salvation is our sinfulness. Because if you're not sinful, then you don't need to be saved. But we're all sinful. We all need to be saved. All right. To colic of the day. Um, Almighty and everlasting Father, you give your children many blessings, even though we are undeserving. In every trial and temptation, grant us steadfast confidence in your loving kindness and mercy. Uh, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, this is a newer colic, meaning newer like 500 years, as opposed to 1,000 or 1,500 years. So, anybody reaches 500, you're still young, according to colic prayers. All right, questions, comments? Um, I think Sunday, when you or whoever is reading Sunday on that Romans that um, was questioned about who, who are they talking about today and that, and that, can you plug in who they are? Um, the I'm, I'm at the gathering this weekend, so um, Pastor Stecker is, so I don't know what he's going to do. Say, um, like the Jews are enemies of God. For right. Sake. Can we just say, you figured out for yourself you would have came to Bible class on Wednesday, you would know what we're talking about? You can say that, I'm not going to. I've said that a few times. I just come. So what does Laura's husband do? He calls me and says, what does this mean? 
I know. So I don't know. I wrote this and this, but I'm not sure. You better call. That was that was. A, I'm glad he did. So and he didn't that day. And then but he did the next said, day. Call he next called me the next day. Yes, go ahead. He had a he had a very he he had a good question. He that was a that was good. So you know, and things like that. People actually wait for this video to come out because you know during July we did and I got. Uh, how come there's no video today? I'm going, because I'm on vacation. <laughs> oh, when are you going to start my, in August? Really? <laughs> so, that's all right. You'll get 11 months, 11 out of the 12 months, you'll get me whatever I do here. All right, questions? Anything else? Let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.